sorry about that, babe. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Bits Plays. This one's a little bit special, uh, much like, I guess, World of Illusion was as well. This was a voted on by you guys uh, Bits Plays, sort of. I pretty much just asked you guys to pick a certain run for me to do in Dark Souls. We'll be playing Dark Souls Remastered, uh, and what won in the poll was a casual slash lore run, which is great for me because in the past, uh, I don't know, Maybe three years or so. The only times that I've played this game were for various challenge runs. I did uh, two all achievement runs. I did three soul level one runs in the last, well, that might be five years, but yeah, I haven't actually like played the game in a long time, which means there's a few areas that I haven't gone to in a long time. And I'm just kind of in the mood for it. So I'm glad that you guys chose it. Uh, Dark Souls, I'm not going to ramble on too much about it right now. Probably get into something maybe in a later video. It's possibly my favorite game of all time. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to this. I'm not a lore expert, by the way. I know a little bit, and I'll be reading item descriptions and all that type of stuff, but I'm not like one of those fucking people who knows everything. So if I say something that's a little factually incorrect, let me know. Don't be mean about it. If you're mean about it, I'll fucking delete that shit. But, uh, just let me know in the comments below. And some stuff uh, in the lore, one of the, the main allures, if you will, to From Software and their modern library and the lore that goes with all those games is that a lot of it's open to interpretation. A lot of it isn't really fully explained. So that's the beauty of it. So if there's something that's kind of open to interpretation that I get into that you disagree with or have a different view on, let me know as well, because it's always very interesting to read. But uh, yeah, I guess you could say I like this game a lot. Um, <laughs> we'll be uh, playing the PS4 version on my PS5. Um, I also have it on PC, but just to let you guys know, I'm having some problems with recording PC games lately, and it's not because of my computer, it's because of my monitors and the resolutions. Uh, I have a literal TV as one of my monitors, and it has a very strange resolution, and everything comes out looking like shit in OBS, and I have an ultra-wide monitor, which I'm staring at right now, which uh, does not jive well with Dark Souls Remastered. Tough to explain, rather not get into it, so I ended up lugging my PS5 down here, we're just going to play on console, it's not that big of a deal, so... Anyways, guys, kick back, enjoy. It's going to be a little bit longer. We're going to take our time. I'm going to enjoy myself. I really, really love this game, and I haven't really dove back into it in quite some time. I just want to point out, though, real quick, that when I was doing some test footage to make sure that my audio levels and stuff were, were you know, sounding all right, um, I've been playing a lot of Elden Ring lately. My God, it's a bit of a culture shock going all the way back to 2011 or whenever Dark Souls came out. It's still my favorite game in the series, but... Ugh, it's a little rough. It's a little rough not being able to jump and I'm so used to being able to jump easily now. You could jump in Dark Souls, but not the same. Uh, and there's a lot of quality of life things that exist in the newer games that aren't in this one. And it's going to I'm probably going to play like shit, but it is what it is. I've already beaten the game. Soul level one, all bosses three times. So I don't have anything to prove. <laughs> all right, guys, uh, sit back and enjoy. And uh, I'll check in with you another time. All right. It's time, baby. It's time for me to revisit Dark Souls Remastered. Haven't played this in a few years. Uh, for those of you that know me, it's one of my favorite games, as I probably mentioned in the intro. The last few times I played this game, it was all challenge runs, and this time it's going to be a non-challenge run. I'm going to fucking enjoy myself. <laughs> it's been a long time. i also going to put this out front right away. I've been playing a lot of Elden Ring. A at least what two 220 hours i think since release day in about a little over two and a half months i guess um or two months i did a little test of this the other day so i could uh, make sure that everything looked and sounded fine <clears throat> Whew, it's a little rough going back to dark souls from uh, elden ring as much as I, I do love dark souls but the one thing that i want you guys to enjoy during this playthrough is really just take in the designs, especially the first half of the game. It's just like unrivaled, I'm telling you. So, as I mentioned in the intro, 
This is going to be a slow run. We're going to do a little bit of lore. I'm actually going to be using a, a checklist that's on GitHub because I kind of want to do as close to 100% as possible. Now, the issue with the checklist, I've seen this checklist before, a lot of this is predicated upon having the master key. <sighs> so, I don't know if I want the master key or not. This is put on uh, PS5, by the way. This is the PS4 version on PS5 because I was having issues with my PC version. But, uh... You know, let's get with the character creator and um, the opening cutscene and then we'll, we'll bullshit a little bit more about the checklist and all that type of stuff. So, who are we rocking here? Um, we'll do a male character. Oh, you know what I just realized? This is like the first time I'm playing a modern game. So I'm so used to having the black bars on the side of the screen where my, uh, my microphone doesn't block any of the game. It's actually blocking part of this. <laughs> Not used to it. Maybe I'll move it to the side just a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit better. Hopefully it didn't uh, affect my voice too much for you, but... Alright. We've been naming everything Razor for a while. Since his passing. But, uh, you know what? Let's go with, uh... Let's go with Bits. And should we just go wild here? I don't know as far as other character. See, the one thing that I want to point out to anybody that hasn't played the game before, don't go too wild at the character creator, because unless you're in human form, you're not even going to see what you look like here. You're going to look like a rotted piece of beef jerky or some shit. Alright, which class should I choose? I'm so used to choosing the Pyromancer, which is for the uh, Soul Level 1 run. Um, as you guys know, classes don't matter too much. You cannot respec in this game, but you could pick whatever and then just start dumping, you know, levels into whatever you choose to be. I'm trying to think of an interesting build that I want to do on this run, and I'm having a rough time. I thought about returning to my roots, which was a Zweihander uh, bonk build, which was my first ever playthrough that I did. Most of the time I do... <laughs> No armor, grass crest shield, and Ushigatana or something. So I don't want to keep doing that over and over and over. I'm thinking... <sighs> Part of me, like, wanted to do, like, a sorcerer or a pyromancer, but then I was thinking about maybe doing, like, a sorcery-only run. This is tough, dude. See, the cleric is interesting, but the problem with the cleric is... We're not playing online, and I don't even think online works anymore. At least on the PC it doesn't. Or it wasn't yesterday. But the easiest way to, like, get up in the, uh, the Sunbro Covenant is to do online summons. So I'm gonna be missing out on some good, uh, spells, realistically. Um... Maybe we'll go with... Oh yeah, it doesn't... Yeah, I forgot the thief has the master key from the jump. Hmm... Uh, I'm so torn, guys. You know what? I don't think I'm going to take the Master Key. It's been such a long time since I had to do the whole game that I think I want to go through it normally without the Master Key. So that means the checklist is going to be fucked up. Alright, let's just roll with... Right, let's go with a Strength build. Fuck it. We'll just go warrior. And for our gift, let's go over this a little bit for you guys. So, Goddess's Blessing, Divine Holy Water, fully restores HP and status. It's basically just a full heal uh, in terms of other RPGs. Black Fire Bombs are consumable um, items that are used as weapons. They're more strong. They're more strong. They're stronger than regular fire bombs, and if you choose this, you could actually kill the Asylum Demon in the very beginning uh, very easily to get the hammer. Uh, twin Humanities. Uh, humanities are used in this game as multiple things. You have a Humanity Meter. The higher it is, I think some resistances go up as well as item discovery. Um, if you also have Humanities, you could turn human. Human form allows you to be invaded, summon, all that type of stuff. 
There's really, like, no benefit for the most part to be in human form offline, but... Also, humanities heal you. They're basically full heals as well, actually. Binoculars, pretty, uh... Pretty straightforward. Use the pier at faraway sites, and just get a closer look at things. The Pendant, a trinket. No effect, but fond memories comfort travelers. So, the Pendant legitimately does nothing. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they data mined it and they found nothing. There is no secret, it's literally a useless item. Master Key, I talked about that earlier, the Thief starts with it, oddly enough. Opens any basic lock, initial equip for the Thief, as you can see. Um, Master Key is the best thing to choose if you're gonna play the game. Um, it opens up a bunch of areas that you have to find separate keys for. Tiny Beings Ring uh, increases your HP. You only have two ring slots in the first Dark Souls, so keep that in mind. And the Old Witch's Ring, rather useless. A, a gift from a witch, ancient ring with no obvious effect. It's something that you use later to talk to an NPC uh, down in the Quailag's Domain area, I think. It's her sister. I don't want I mean, to spoil too much, but uh, you get new dialogue when you wear it because I think she believes that you're the Old Witch. All right, so we're gonna choose black fire bombs, and we're gonna go with a very large. We're not gonna spend too much time here. Let's read this though. Again, this is like a slow lore playthrough. Commoner, very average commoner face. Delta farmer, commonly seen face in the five finger delta. Now, a lot of these areas you will never visit in this game, but it's still part of the lore. Astora noble, handsome face of the refined common in Astora. Dragon Scholar. Intelligent, sharp lines, but scholarly looks invite insult. Thoroland Cleric. Look common in Thoroland, known for its stalwarts clerics. Jubilant Katarina. Jovial features of Katarina, known for festivity and drink. Dubious Kareem. Ominous features associated with the Earl of Kareem. Classic Zena. Thoughtful, mature face of or excuse me, thoughtful, mature face common in historical Zena. Eerie Great Swamp. Great Swamp heretics face prejudice for their atypical looks. Far East Traveler. Face from a distant eastern land of almond eyes and thin lips. We're gonna go with the, uh, we're gonna go with the Jubilant Katarina. And this is where you gotta go hard with the hair here, you know what I'm saying? We're not gonna read the descriptions. You know we're going bobbed. You gotta. And we're gonna, we're gonna give a nice hairstyle. I don't know if I want to go silver or blonde or maybe, you know what, red's pretty good. And, uh, no, we don't want to. We want to actually customize just a, just a little bit. Just a little bit. We're gonna go with very young. And we got the old, old hor hormones here. <laughs> Strong features. How about that? And then if we go down here, I think we could do, yeah, a little bit of, uh... We're gonna try to make an abomination for you guys. We're getting there. I've seen some really wild-looking ones. Obviously, you could probably expect in a game like Elden Ring, you have a lot more, uh... <laughs> free will over the design of the character. Some things are sort of locked in here. But, if you create something kind of crazy, you can do this like a randomizer feature where it gives you really fucked up looking people. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm gonna sneeze for like the last five minutes, I'm so sorry. Um... There we go, let's get that schnoz. Oh no, we don't want thin cheeks, not at all. That's fine. Okay. Let's make... You know what, let's make some very, very tiny lips. Wait, what? Oh, there we go. Oh, I was looking at the wrong thing. My bad. <clears throat> let's go thin as well. Should we have a pronounced chin? I feel like we should. There we go. <laughs> Look at that pronounced chin. Perfect. And, uh, do we want to fuck with the hair just a little bit? There we go. Oh, perfect, guys. 
Perfect. Alright. And now, I'm actually going to mute myself while we uh, listen to the opening cutscene. How about that? Let's go to OK. In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and with fire came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then, from the dark, they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. Nito, the first of the dead. The Witch of Isolith and her Daughters of Chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight and his Faithful Knights. And the furtive Pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenged the dragons. Gwyn's mighty lords peeled apart their stone skins. The witches weaved great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death and disease. Soon the flames will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now, there are only embers, and man sees not light, but only endless nights. And amongst the living are seen carriers of the accursed dark side. So there you have it, there's the intro. Pretty sick, right? So we're gonna go over a couple things here before we really, really get started. Um, we are now being thrust into the game in the opening yes, tutorial area, indeed. if you will. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world.
<laughs> See, we look like a little beef jerky version of what we were. So one thing that sucks, I was tinkering around with it, they added some kind of motion blur bullshit to Dark Souls Remastered and I hate it. I can't seem to turn it off. Here, let me see if I can get it. Uh, you can kind of see it when I'm moving. I know you could turn it off on PC, but I was trying to turn it off the other day here and I couldn't. Um, I also wanted to see if the, okay. Looks like my settings were saved. I think 556 is pretty good for things not blowing out your eardrums. Uh, we're gonna keep the HUD huge. It just reminds me of the old days. So that was Oscar. I'm pressing the wrong- I'm already pressing the wrong buttons, guys. In Elden Ring, Triangle is, uh, pick up stuff. But it's X in Dark Souls. So we got the dungeon key from Oscar of Astora, who was the, uh, NPC that was above there. Threw it down for us. Uh, I'm gonna strip naked because, fuck it, I don't like, uh, fat or mid-rolling in this game. But I might- I might do a mid-roll build, we'll see. Um, so let's talk about a couple of things from the opening cutscene. Again, if I'm off on my lore, feel free to correct me, don't be a dick about it. Um, but anyway. So, long ago, uh, there was the war against the dragons. Uh, Lord Gwyn led the war against the dragons, as you could see. <clears throat> and he teamed up with the Witches of Izalith, uh, Gravelord Nido, um, Seat the Scalus, who betrayed his own kind, and uh, the Furtive Pygmy... Also, the reason why it was shown was they have a, uh, they found a piece of the, the soul, the dark soul, or whatever. Um, you never really figure out who that is. There's been a lot of lore theories that it's a person that we'll see in the DLC, but I think that's been disproven. Uh, for the most part, you just refer to it as man. Um, so anyway, blah, blah, blah. They won the war against the dragons. Um... The Age of the Ancients, all that kind of shit. The Age of Fire. And unfortunately, the fire... Well, I guess it depends how you look at it. This is where things start getting a little hairy. Uh, the fire is fading, and the dark is setting in. And we'll learn a little bit more later. I don't want to spoil it too much. We'll get there when we get there. Um, but they were talking about the, the dark sign, which is uh, the curse that's branded upon... See right there? That's part of the dark sign curse. Uh, you become a hollow, basically. So the person that we made at the beginning of the game, we don't look like that right now because we are lacking humanity, so thus we are hollowing. Uh, humanity is what gives you the human shape, if you will. Um, and pretty much everybody who is sent here is destined to die. These are all hollows. And, uh, yeah. As you can see over here, there is somebody lurking around. Uh, something tells me, I don't know, I don't want to like spoil stuff, I guess, for those that have never seen it, so I'll just say maybe or maybe not, we'll see him later. Also, I'm really congested tonight, I'm sorry guys. The show must go on. Uh, and the reason why we're, we're talking so much and we watched everything so intently is there really aren't many cutscenes in this game. The story is left up to your interpretation through minimal dialogue and also through item descriptions. You're gonna see trophies pop up here and there because I've yet to play this on PS5. All my other playthroughs were either on PC or Xbox. So here we go. We lit our first bonfire. There is no fast travel warping in this game until later. And you can see, since we took the black fire bombs, we were able to easily kill the tutorial boss, the Asylum Demon. And now we have the Demon's Great Hammer, which you do not get unless you kill him in your first encounter. There we go. I wish that... <laughs> of course, I'm doing so much talking and reading during this playthrough, and I'm all congested. <clears throat> A Great Hammer... Demon weapon built from the stone arch trees used by lesser demons at the North Undead Asylum. The hammer is imbued with no special power, but can merrily beat foes to a pulp, providing you have the strength to wield it. Which I don't believe that we do, even two-handed. 
Yeah, we are a ways away from that. It's pretty funny looking, isn't it? But we are still weaponless at the moment. Um, so typically when you do this battle, unless you know what you're doing, like I did, uh, you're gonna get your shit pushed in. So the game purposely leads you over here, and that would close behind you if you did not kill the boss, and then it leads you on through the rest of the asylum, giving you another bonfire to light. Also, guys, very important, in this game, if you do not sit at the bonfire, it does not register, even if you light it. A big change that I believe started with Dark Souls 2. <laughs> so we get the, he uh, the heater shield. It's actually a pretty good shield. I think it's a 100% physical uh, block. And we pick up the longsword. We're going to go ahead and run past this fellow through the fog wall. Minor things changed in Dark Souls Remastered, such as the color of items, the color of the fog wall. Obviously, 60 FPS changed as well. We will equip the longsword. Now we have to go up here and trigger this ball. To go talk to our friend who gave us the key. Um, should I kill? You know what? Let me go back and kill that guy. So we can give Oscar his due. soon, then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I, we're both undead. Hear me out, will you? Regrettably, I have failed in my mission, but perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family, thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know, and I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask, an undead favorite. Oh, and this. Now I must bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now, and thank you. Alright, so a lot to digest. So we got our Estus Flasks, which is basically our healing. <clears throat> I don't know if I've ever read the description. The undead treasure, these dull green flasks, fill with Estus at a bonfire, fills HP. The Estus Flasks are linked to the Fire Keepers. The Dark Tales also make reference. An emerald flask from the Keeper's soul, she lives to protect the flame and dies to protect it further. So the bonfires aren't just normal bonfires, they are basically watched over by fire keepers. And obviously, as you can see, when you rest at the uh, bonfire, your Estus fills up. Normally it's actually green, but you always see it in sunny delight form. Um, so anyway, Oscar is from the land of Astora, um, and he made pilgrimage here, and unfortunately he met his... And, um, he was fucked up by the Asylum Demon, actually. Um, also pretty funny, uh, his art, or his armor, excuse me, is very similar to the fluted set from Demon Souls, which was a very, very popular, uh, it was on the cover, uh, the main NPC of the game, um, the fuck is his name, dude? Oh my god, I'm drawing a blank. The, the son of King Alant, I believe. Uh, fuck, what is his name? It's killing me. Anyway, maybe if I remember a little bit later. But, um, I also laugh when he talks about his family saying. He's like, oh, our family has an old saying, and then he just starts spewing off all this old English for, like, 17 sentences. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's talking about making a pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords, and uh, in order to get there, you have to ring the Bells of Awakening, which he referenced. And that's basically the early, um, the early game goals are ringing the two bells of awakening. We'll learn more about those in a bit. Uh, fuck, what the hell? I'm just looking it up. I can't remember the dude's name from, uh, from Demon's Souls. Demon's Souls main NPC. Killing me right now. 
Uh, I mean, there's a lot of NPCs, but he's like the guy. Of course, I'm looking it up and he's not appearing anywhere. What the fuck? All right, um, King Alant's son. Uh, Ostrava of Boletaria. That's right. Oh, his real name is Ariona Alant. See, these are things that, that I don't even know. One day we'll, we'll definitely dive into Demon Souls. But anyway, with the keys that, unfortunately, Oscar just died. The keys that he gave you, you could open up some doors. That leads you back to the room down there. I'm gonna kill this dude. And we use the first key that he gave us. And now, typically, this is kind of where the game is going to tell you to uh, learn the combat and manage crowds and all that type of stuff. Oh my god, I keep pressing X like I'm going to jump like this is Elden Ring. But you don't do that in this game. You jump by holding B and then pressing it very slightly and you barely jump. And if you want to jump attack, you do forward and R2. Stuff to pull off. Gotta get used to it. I gotta get my parrying down, so let's go do that over here. I love parrying in Dark Souls 1. Oh boy. Been a minute. Oh my god, we're gonna die. <laughs> Dude, I am so rusty right now. Oh my god. It's fucked up because I'm actually like really good at parrying in Dark Souls 1, but... I can't get the timing down right now. I guess, to be fair, these guys have really delayed tells, so fuck it, whatever. I've been doing my rune level 1 playthrough on Elden Ring and I've been seriously just like... Mind boggled at this point, going back to this game. So, usually, you'll be in here, right? And the Asylum Demon will be down there, and then you want to do a plunging attack onto him. So we go, boom, but he's not here anymore, unfortunately. And this is the Big Pilgrim's Key that he dropped. There are a few items out here. Um, there's one in here. I don't remember if we get it now or not. I'm trying to remember. Um... See, this is what I'm talking about, guys. It's been so long since I played. Also, one thing I'm gonna have to really get used to, in Elden Ring, in Sekiro, you have a lot of bouts of infinite stamina. And, um... That is not the case in Dark Souls 1. 2 or 3, really. You cannot just run willy-nilly. Okay, so yeah, the area that I was thinking about, you can't get there yet. Did I just spoil that we might be coming back? Shit, maybe I did. Alright guys, let's uh, head out of the Undead Asylum. Again, <laughs> do not be watching this unless you're down for a slow playthrough. Because this is not a quick one. We are taking our sweet ass time and really talking about things. Yes, again, I've done Soul Level 1 multiple times. I've done all achievements. I actually did shitty speedruns where I beat the game in like two hours. It's not bad for me, right? No glitches. Some people uh, won't get these items over here. I think that's it for now. You can see this nest. It looks a little peculiar, right? Well, I'll keep that in mind for later. It is a uh, staple that was introduced in Demon Souls. I think there's one more item? I can't remember. Um, maybe there isn't. Yeah, you know, I don't think there is. All right, let's roll. Only in the ancient legends it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. To leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords.
Lordran. So we are whisked away from the Undead Asylum to the Land of the Ancient Lords, Lordran, which is the best interconnected level design I've ever seen in video games. And I'm so happy to get to go through this again in a slow fashion. It is astounding. It's what really drew me into the series. For anybody uh, familiar with Metroidvanias, this is basically that. So one of the few areas in the game that has music that's not a boss fight is the Firelink Shrine. The other ones off the top of my head are Ash Lake, and that's it, right? Anyway, here is a main bonfire where you, as of right now, you can level up Kindle in Reverse Hollowing, which, uh, you have to use two humanities, I think, to go human form total. Uh, kindling the uh, bonfires can be done with a firekeeper soul, I believe. Leveling up. God, it's been so long since I leveled up. All right, let me think about what I want to do. I think I wanted to do a bonk build, right? So let's go vitality, uh, endurance and strength for now. There are hard caps, soft caps. I don't really give a fuck, though. <laughs> I'm just gonna go... I'm gonna go in. Well, what do we have here? You must be a new arrival. Let me guess. Fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first. But there's no salvation here. You'd have done better to rot in the undead asylum. But too late now. <sighs> well, since you're here, let me help you out. There are actually two bells of awakening. One's up above in the undead church. The other is far, far below in the ruins at the base of Blight Town. Ring them both and something happens. Brilliant, right? Not much to go on, but I have a feeling that won't stop you. So, off you go. It is why you came, isn't it? To this accursed land of the undead? <laughs> ah, your face. You're practically hollow. But who knows? Going hollow could solve quite a bit. <laughs> Alright, I think he has a little bit more dialogue, but nothing crazy, so... Uh, he is the Crestfallen Warrior. <clears throat> Another kind of staple in the From Software games. Not necessarily him himself, but in general, a Crestfallen Warrior. And he was pretty much telling us more about the Bells of Awakening, which Oscar alluded to. There are two of them. One is in the Undead Parish. And the other is far, far below in Blight Town. And you could actually go to Blight Town right away if you wanted to, if you had the master key, but we don't. So we're not going to be going there for a little while. Um, yeah, so pretty much, uh, you are, if you don't have the master key, you are faced with two decisions. One is, do you go over this way? And two is, do you go over this way? Well, the correct answer is you go over that way, because that leads you to the Undead Burg. If you go this way, you go through a cemetery, which has ridiculously hard enemies for the early game. And if you continue on, uh, you go down into the catacombs, and if somehow you manage to get through there, you get to the Tomb of the Giants, and none of those areas do you want to be there right now. Trust me. However, when I did my shitty speedruns, again, very shitty, not optimized whatsoever, and with very, very, very old strats, you can go all the way down and get a very, very good weapon, it requires pretty minimal stats to wield. But the issue is, do not rest at any of the bonfires, otherwise you're probably not getting back out. So heed my warning there, people, if you're playing this for the first time. So we grab some humanities. I don't think we actually uh, read the description of the humanities. Or the souls, actually. Soul of a lost and dead who is long ago gone hollow used to acquire souls, and souls are the currency in this game for both uh, levels and purchasing things. Souls are the source of life, and whether undead or even hollow, one continues to seek them. <clears throat> Humanity. 
Rare tiny black sprite found on corpses, used to gain one humanity and restore a large amount of HP. This black sprite is called humanity, but little is known about its nature. If the soul is the source of all life, then what distinguishes the humanity we hold within ourselves? So you'll find these scattered throughout the world, uh, and certain enemies drop it, believe it or not, rats? And these little like weird baby things that you see later in the, uh, in the game? So the, the theory, I think, behind the rats is that they were feasting on um, people, basically, that had humanity. Oh god, I'm so congested tonight. This is fucked up. <laughs> I like, literally it just started to, of course, as soon as I sit down to record. I'm not kidding. Hello there. I believe we are not acquainted. I am Petrus of Thoroughland. Have you business with us? If not, I'd prefer to keep a distance, if possible. Hey, we got similar haircuts, bro. Hello there. I realize that I have requested that we retain our distance. But I also want you to know that it is not meant in ill will. Here, take this as a token of peace. No, go ahead. It's for you. We got a copper coin. Oh my. You again. Oh, I know. How about this? I have to await my companions here anyway. So what if I were to teach you some miracles? Would that please you? Sure. Very well. Then first, a covenant with the gods. Hey. So we're joining the Way of White Covenant. Now let me share my miracles. Only their ultimate effectiveness will be determined by your efforts. And your faith. All right, so got a couple things for sale here. We got some uh, talismans, which you need in order to uh, cast miracles. Then we got some miracles here as well. Let's go through them. I don't think we're really going to be using miracles in this game. And like I said, you can't respec in Dark Souls One. So if we choose a hard no towards a certain path, we're probably not going to use it. But it's still worthwhile to uh, to look at. So great heal excerpt. Great Miracle cast by Advanced Clerics restores high HP. Great Heal Excerpt uh, borrows from only several verses of Great Heal. As a result, it can be only cast a stark few times. Homeward. Great Miracle cast by Advanced Clerics return to the last bonfire, bonfire rested at. Would normally link to one's homeland, only the Curse of the Undead has distorted its power, redirecting casters to a bonfire. Or perhaps for Undead, this serves as their home? It's actually pretty cool. See, this is stuff I didn't necessarily really read before, so I'm even, like, learning some stuff here. Force. Common miracle amongst cleric knights creates a shockwave. This quickly acting miracle inflicts no damage but propels foes back and defends against arrows. Cleric knights use this miracle when charging into enemy mobs, so it's basically a way to just kind of thwart things away from you really quickly. <clears throat> Seek guidance. Miracle of clerics on an undead mission. Display more guidance from other worlds. Guidance facilitates communication between undead, but their value varies greatly. A balance of faith and wisdom is required. I believe this has something to do with, like, uh, <clears throat> they're referring to people from other worlds, so I think it's like summons and shit. Heal. Elementary miracle cast by clerics restores HP. To cast a miracle, the caster learns a tale of the gods and says a prayer to be blessed by its revelations. Heal is the shortest of such miraculous tales. We've already entered the Covenant. We can learn gestures uh, from multiple people. So we learned the Shrug, which is actually one of my favorites. Talk a little bit more to Petrus of Thorland here. My companions are Milady and her young knights. She is young, <laughs> but burdened by an undead mission. We are her defenses to keep her from harm. An undead mission? Regrettably, I cannot share that with you. But you are my pupil. Perhaps if you show your faith. I don't remember this. Maybe it's because I don't really talk to Petrus much. Well, I don't have enough fucking souls right now, bro. I'm afraid that may be difficult. For our missions are sacred. Well, let's Can leave him for now. Be effective? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Alright. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about covenants briefly. What do these say? Yeah, gesture. 
Oops, that's not gesture. There we go. And let's uh, replace one. Perhaps, oh, we gotta keep point down, right? Let's switch this one out for uh, the old shrug. A apparently you could do it with motion controls? How does that work? Uh... Yeah, I'll be honest with you, I don't really understand what those mean. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. I never understood the whole touchpad fucking thing with Sony. Let's go collect some items from around the area. There's lots to get. We have some more fire bombs here, which is pretty cool. I might try to use some things that I literally, like, never use just to keep things fresh for myself. Dude, it's been so long since I played. I'm, like, honestly having a pretty good time. And yes, you can die, I believe, if you jump in there. I could be incorrect, but... Also, we are not gonna advance out of Firelink for a little bit. We're just gonna kind of explore around the edges, show you some things. No response, she cannot speak. So this is the Firekeeper of Firelink Shrine. You can uh, reinforce your SS Flask with her. And she can't talk, you know why? Because most of the Firekeepers actually have their tongues stolen from them, I'm pretty sure. Could be wrong there. Um, you go over here. This leads down to an elevator, actually. And I'll take it just to show you. Uh, you know, we'll not do that right now. Let's go grab some more items. And fuck, we might go through the, uh, do a little suicide run through the graveyard for you guys. We'll see. And honestly, guys, even if this doesn't do very well, in a sense, like, none of my Let's Plays really do very well. They're for my own enjoyment. Also, it's good because I get to use footage for reviews and shit like that, but, um... I'm definitely going to do the whole modern from software library. I'm just probably going to play it on PS5 for the most part. <clears throat> I would like to play the uh, OG Demon Souls as well. I do have a PS3 and a pass through card. So something really cool to note here, guys, is I can't remember if it was Lance McDonald or um, Vati Vidya or both or something like that, but they unearthed something here. Could have been Sanitas K. Fuck, I can't remember. There's so many souls, people. This statue, um, originally served as, uh, I believe a shortcut. It was either a shortcut. Uh, I'll have to, like, link it in the descriptions if I could remember it, but. Uh, Andre of Astora, who is the main blacksmith in the game, was here. In, like, the concept art and potentially the very early beta, maybe. He moves this out of the way for you, and it revealed a shortcut. And I believe the shortcut was towards, like, the Capra Demon? I don't know, it's pretty cool, though, and I think somebody actually restored it, and if you'd used, like, a PC mod, you could actually do it. I like learning about things like that. Very interesting. Soul of a Lost Undead. We're not gonna read every single thing, because, like, for the most part... You could probably assume what the soul of a lost undead is, right? There's our boy that carried us here. To my knowledge, you actually can't attack it? I think I tried shooting it with an arrow before and nothing happened. Could be wrong, though. I was kind of always hoping for more from that thing, but we just don't get it, quite frankly. Oh my god, I forgot that you could, like, barely jump in this game. Uh, it's so funny going from uh, Elden Ring to this. <clears throat> so, over here is the graveyard. There's actually a few good items over there, people. So, we're, we're definitely going to go on a suicide run. But, Foist, we're going to head over here. For some more items. So, we can go up here first. And, if you go... Well, no, technically not here... You can kind of jump over here later. I think, you know what, I think there's actually a really, really tricky jump that you can make to get up there from here, but I ain't ready to do that. 
So, this is a elevator that's not working, but we will fall down. Because, holy hell, I jacked up the brightness too, didn't I? It's very dark. Yeah, wow. <clears throat> there we go again, pressing triangle like we're playing Elden Ring. Homeward Bone, which, um, I actually want to read the lore behind it. A bone fragment reduced to white ash. Return to the last bonfire used for resting. Bonfires are fueled by bones of the undead. In rare cases, the strong urge of their owners, uh, previous owners, to seek bonfires and chance their bones with a homeward instinct. So this is very similar to the homeward miracle that we just read about. It brings you back to the last bonfire you rested at. Very useful. Cracked Red Eye Orb, we really won't be using those in our playthrough, but it is interesting. Invade Another World. Online play item. So, Hollows cannot use them. As I said, you have to be in human form to do a lot of online, basically all online stuff. Defeat the master of the world you have invaded to acquire humanity. So basically, you invade some poor sap, it kind of level matches you. Uh, and if you have a duel, or you literally are just trolling them, and you win, you get humanity. The Cracked Red Eye Orb allows players to temporarily uh, imitate this ability normally limited to Dark Wraiths of Koth. Pretty cool uh, thing that we'll hopefully see later. I'm going to try to do all the NPC quests. I might forget one or two, but we'll see. Morning Star, and we got our first Talisman, so if we wanted to cast Miracles, we could. With a certain faith level, of course. Um... Should I use the Morning Star? I kind of think I just like the Long Sword at this point. Also, there's nothing really uh, crazy lore-wise about you know basic weapons, so we're not going to read that. And Lloyd's Talisman, actually, definitely want to read that one. Prevents Estus recovery within a limited area. Talisman utilized by All Father Lloyd's cleric knights to hunt down the undead. Block Estus Recovery within limited area. In the outside world, the undead are accursed creatures, and Lloyd's Cleric Knights are widely praised for their undead hunts. This blessed talisman blocks undead recovery, allowing the knights to fight with impunity. So basically, as it states, uh, it, you cannot heal if you're in the vicinity of that being used. Um, which reminds me, I forgot to touch on the covenants that we were talking with uh, Petrus of Thorland earlier, joining the Way of White. <clears throat> he is a NBC with a quest line, he kind of alluded to it, but we're not going to get there yet. That's probably one I might flub up, actually. There's a couple of really weird triggers with it, and I can't remember. But either way, uh, one of the main reasons that you join Covenants, other than obviously getting the ability to do certain things, like we joined Petrus' Covenant, and then we're able to buy miracles, um, certain Covenants have certain things. Uh, there's one later that you patrol an area and you get covenant rewards, which eventually will unlock like spells or weapons or whatever. Uh, I alluded to the Sunbro Covenant, the uh, Sunlight Altar Covenant. Um, you basically throw down your summon sign, you defeat bosses and you get, oh, what the fuck? You get a certain item uh, that counts as a, when you turn it in, it's like a covenant reward. The more rewards you turn in, um, you know, you get cool things, like I said, like spells. Um, so the majority of the Covenants revolve directly around either helping characters, invading characters, protecting areas. It's actually pretty cool. Um, when online was bumping, it was very cool actually. There's a couple of really interesting Covenants and, um, yeah, I, I, the one thing that I kind of don't like about Elden Ring with the online, I haven't really played it at all online, but there are no Covenants. There's no cool, like, shticks and gimmicks. But anyways, let's continue on. Let's look through the graveyard. <clears throat> and by look, I mean run through, because the enemies are pretty strong and we have a plus zero weapon. And we're like, what, like level seven or something? Oh my god, that's right, X does not do anything. <laughs> this is not Elden Ring Cody for the last time. Alright, we're going through. We're trying here, people. Trying to get some items. Catechus round shield. Oh, shoot. I forgot about that. Oh. We're not going down there. That brings us to the catacombs. We do want to go here. The Zwei Hander, which might be our endgame weapon. I gotta think it over. 
Binoculars. I think I got everything. Nope, something up here. The winged spear. Oh, there's two items, dude. Oh my god, no. No! <laughs> Our bleed. Large soul of a lost and dead. Run, motherfucker. <laughs> so one of the shitty parts is, is the, uh, the skeletons will actually, like, follow you hard. Back to Firelink Shrine. So we're probably gonna die. You can't rest at the fire if anything is in your vicinity, so... Ugh, hurry! Alright, cool. Whew. Not that it matters too much, we only have 61 souls and we're not doing a permadeath run. But we got a couple of cool things there. So, I just want to make sure, I'm, again, I'm using my checklist. After the fact. Making sure I didn't miss anything. Looks like we got everything in the graveyard, so that's cool. Alright, let's do some more reading, shall we? Hopefully, uh, the next time I do a recording session, I'm not fucking congested into the high heavens. I know it's probably annoying for you guys. I forgot to read these. Copper coin. <clears throat> coin made of copper. Duh. Its face shows old man McCloyf, god of medicine and drink. Even coins of great value in the world of men have little value in Lordran, where the accepted currency is souls. Those who dream of returning to the outside world are fond of carrying these around. I don't remember what these do. They might be a, uh, a covenant turn-in item, but I honestly don't remember. And what else didn't we read? The binoculars. Binoculars made of brass, used to peer at distant scenery. This advanced device was built by a famous craftsman of Astora. Its utility is singular, but its applications many. The value of these specs depends greatly on the imagination of their owner. We'll take a look at those two in a bit. Oh, we didn't read the Black Separation Crystal. This Black Crystal, long symbol of farewell, is granted to banish undead. This crystal sends phantoms back to their homes or sends you back to yours. Beware of fickle use of this item if you intend to nurture relations. Nurture. So basically, um, <clears throat> if you're invading somebody, you can go back home with that. Or I guess you could send invaders home with it? I didn't know that. As you guys can probably assume, I didn't really play much online. Only a little bit. I'm an offline guy. And here's the dark sign, which we read about earlier. The dark sign signifies uh, an accursed undead. Those branded with it are reborn after death, but will one day lose their mind and go hollow. So basically, that's that's the lore behind being able to die and respawn over and over and over. But the more that you die, the more hollow you go, which isn't really a thing in this game. Uh, it's actually a thing in Dark Souls 2, which, by the way, for the record, is fucking great. Fucking hate people that hate Dark Souls 2. Fight me about it. Death triggers the dark sign, which returns its bearer to the last bonfire rested at, but at the cost of all humanity and souls. So, it's basically a homeward bone, but you lose your humanity if you're in human form and every soul that you have, so it's not advisable. Not advisable. We're not going to continue up there, but we do want to continue down here, which I teased you about earlier. And we did get everything in the graveyard. Do you guys remember that little stairwell that I touched for a brief moment? That leads to the catacombs, which we are not going to right now. You can get a couple items down here and there's an NPC, but we can't really advance. Well, you know what? Your boy's feeling a little risky. I might do something. <clears throat> Make it a little bit easier on myself. Let's equip our homeward bone. Let's do a few things first. So this is a standard from software um, elevator. You step on the center button, go down. When it's done moving, it pops back up. And here's a good tip for you guys if you're playing any FromSoft games and you suck at them. Um, let's say that you know that you're going to die and you want to save a little bit of time. You could step on that button again and jump off and it'll send it back up so you don't have to wait for it uh, when you respawn. So down here is actually the New Londo Ruins. This is a late game area. You can kind of come here, I guess, mid game-ish, depending on your route, but we're not going to be here for a while. I came here, though, to get a few items and talk to an NPC. Still kind of thinking about my build. Like I said, I think I'm going to go strength, but you never know. Picking up lots of souls, which is good. 
These are uh, non-hostile hollows, obviously. So over here, if you have the master key, you could use it. And this unlocks the Valley of the Drakes, which is a very short area. But most importantly, if you continue on over here, can't really see it very well. Uh, you can go to Blighttown through a alternate uh, route. And there's a lot of good items in the Valley of Drakes and Blighttown to kind of uh, power level you early, but we do not have that luxury at the moment, so... I think you could buy the Master Key, though, at some point. Won't really need it, though. We're gonna do everything the hard way. Um, I'm gonna grab some items over here. This isn't really, like... Firelink Shrine stuff anymore, but it's close enough. You know, you're only an elevator away. So we're gonna grab this. I think it's the S stock, right? Yep. Uh, let's take a look at that, actually. Ah, <sighs> 75. Yeah, look at look at big big daddy's eye here. Good stuff. The demon's great hammer. I'm not gonna lie. I might want to use that. There's an item in here. We're gonna. Oh shit! Didn't mean to fall on you, buddy. If you fall on them, I think they can get hostile, which is unfortunate. Transient Curse, a very important item for this area. We'll read it now because I'll probably forget to read it later. It's really only useful down here. Temporary Curse allows engagements with ghosts. Limb of the victim of a curse. Already read that part. The only way to fight back against ghosts who are cursed beings is to become cursed oneself. The safest method, however dreadful, is to cut off an arm of the dead. So, if you use this, you could fight the ghosts. Otherwise, the ghosts in New Londo are invulnerable to your attacks. So, here's what we're going to do before we wrap up this particular session and really get going with the game. Again, guys, I hope you've been enjoying this. I'm having a fucking blast going slow through this game, dude. I've never, like, sat down and really, really read everything. Not even on my first playthrough, because I'm an idiot. Here's the NPC of New Londo. Mm -hmm. well, this is unusual. You haven't lost your head. And more importantly, you're free. How on earth? Well, I shouldn't pry. I'm Rickett of Vinheim. I was once an established smith, but... Look at me now. Can you believe it? Hmm? What is it? Have you? Oh no. Don't worry. I've no intention of escape. It's safe here. I can't bear the thought of going hollow out there. Although, I must admit, I've not much to occupy myself. How about this? I could forge your weapons, albeit with rather minimal tools. I'll show you what made me the best in Vinheim. So this is Rickett of Vinheim. Um, I always remember the way he says that for some reason. Uh, Vinheim, I believe, was the land of ancient sorcerers? Question mark? Or was it the land of the dragons? I don't remember. I think it was the land of the sorcerers. Because uh, this guy does, like, magic smithing mostly. Um, we don't have any weapons for ascension. He does uh, basic um, stuff. Andre of Astora, who I mentioned earlier, is the main blacksmith. But there are a few other blacksmiths throughout this game, and Rickard is one of them. Uh, you can reinforce your armor, repair your equipment. Your equipment typically doesn't break in this game. Um, but, you know, just for the sake of doing it, I'll do it. We don't have any armor on. Has a few things for purchase, which is pretty cool. If we decide to go the magic route, heavy soul arrow and soul arrow, which are actually pr two pretty good spells. Um, especially for early on, and he has a catalyst as well. It's tempting. I actually really thought about doing some sorcery. Maybe I'll do Strength Sorcery. That's an interesting build. That's a very interesting build, actually. It's going to require a lot of levels to be, like, very, very optimal, but... Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, you can give, I believe, a Magic Ember to him later, and he'll be able to uh, magic infuse weapons for you. What is he holding? I can't tell. What is that? Huh, I don't know. What is it? There's nothing to talk about. We're both cursed. I'm dead. But what's there really to moan about? <laughs> I love the bleak Why? nature of these games. You, your head on you really help break the monotony. Alright guys, so I'm gonna do something a little uh off kilter for this playthrough, but I wanna show it to you. Do you want to reinforce your SS flasks early? Or potentially be an idiot and consume an item for some humanity? 
Well, I got the item for you. When you go to Firelink and take the elevator down, equip yourself a shield, and you can run through the very beginning of the New Londo Ruins. It doesn't matter if you die. I would advise uh, popping and then consuming. Not necessarily popping, but consuming your souls that you have before you come down here. I don't mind if I lose 59. It's possible that we die. But if you want to save things, uh, I'll try to homeward bone out of here just to show you guys the whole shebang. So we're going to go after a Firekeeper's soul. Which will uh, upgrade our Essence Flask. I'm not using Transient Curse because we're so weak that we won't really be able to kill these ghosts anyway. But if you work your way over here, there's the ghosts. They have really shitty attacks. Very annoying enemies, actually. Run all the way out here. And grab that. And try to Homeward Bone. And we did it. Cool. So this will bring us back to the Firelink Shrine because it's the last bonfire that we rested at. And let's take a look at the Firekeeper's soul. <clears throat> soul of a long lost Firekeeper. Each Firekeeper is a corpor corporeal manifestation of her bonfire and a draw for the humanity which is offered to her. Her soul is gnawed by infinite humanity and can boost the power of precious Estus flasks. It can be used to gain humanity and restore HP at the cost of losing the Firekeeper's soul to reinforce Estus Flask. So, if you use this, it'll heal you and I think gives you 5 humanity. A gigantic waste. Do not do that. Do not consume this. That is a, uh, a mistake that a lot of people will make. So what you want to do is take it to a Firekeeper, like this one. Reinforce Estus Flask. Offer the soul. Or excuse me. Yeah, the soul. And now we are reinforced. And you can see we now have Estus Flask plus one. Which means we are healing more health with each time uh, we consume an Estus. So yeah. Cool. That's basically the Undead Asylum and the surrounding areas of Firelink. <clears throat> and we are about to head into the Undead Burg. Which is the first main area of the game. And I feel like one of the better early area designs in From Software's uh, catalog. So let's rest and pick up heading towards the Boig. Okay, before we go on to the Undead Burg, I just want to point out that again, we did not take the master key. So the GitHub checklist cheat sheet, if you will. Uh, I cannot complete everything yet for the Firelink Shrine because a few of the areas I literally cannot even go, but we are, God damn it. Trying to do something tricky and I fucked it up. We are going up there. <clears throat> Into the Undead Burg. So let's do some exploration. And some combat. And now it's classic uh, from soft. Oops. As soon as we really get out of Firelink Shrine, we have no more music. It's all about the atmosphere. <clears throat> Oops. Whoa. Cameras uh, obviously work a little different too in this one. And the lock-ons as well. Taking me a minute to get used to. <clears throat> it's funny. A game that I used to play fucking weekly. <clears throat> about what five years ago six years ago seems almost foreign to me now which is crazy to think about all right shall we try let's try pairing there we go i'm telling you it was just that guy's uh weird timing in the undead asylum that fucked me up soul of a lost undead so we have an interesting item over here that i want to get to but goodness gracious i fucking really wish that they had a jump button. <laughs> as much as I uh, love the old school nature of the early From Software games, an actual jump button, it was a good jump, mind you. Because I think you have the ability to toggle it to the stick, similar to how they did in Dark Souls 2, but I don't know. They all kind of suck, <laughs> other than uh, the Sekiro and Elden Ring jumping. <clears throat> okay, let's look at what we got. Oops. 
Boop. Ring of Sacrifice. This mystical ring was created in the sacrificial rite of Velka, the goddess of sin. Its wearer will lose nothing upon death, but the ring itself breaks. So, this is a ring that you find a couple of throughout the game. As it states, if you have it on and you die, you don't lose anything. You don't have to go reclaim your souls, blah blah blah. Uh, but it breaks. It's basically a consumable ring, if you will. And they mentioned Velka, the goddess of sin. She's actually like a very big character in the overarching world and lore of this game. But you never actually meet her. At all. So, it's kind of just something to note. We got Soul of a Lost Undead. And... We go in here and... Try not to get poisoned by this rat. Oh, did there we go! I got fucking poisoned already. Oh, Dark Souls and clanking off the walls. Um, I think I could survive the poison. In a normal playthrough, I'd run back to the bonfire, but I don't think I want to do that. I don't know. Let's, uh, pop a humanity. I think that raises my poison resistance. Alright, we're doing a little challenge around here. <laughs> I guess I could, you know, I can kind of bum rush the bonfire. Alright, we're gonna do a little bit backtracking here. We're gonna do some unconventional... Cody's played this game a million times. Fangs. We're about to have a good, crazy appearance. Oh, jeez! It's a drake! So, this is a very, uh, early bonfire. Gonna wait over here. And unfortunately, we're probably gonna die. And I forgot that Dark Souls does not have omnidirectional rolling. That's something else I gotta get used to. I'm spoiled by the modernness of Elden Ring. Okay, so I kind of rushed that, mostly because I got poisoned by that stupid fucking rat, which I knew was gonna happen. But this is the, uh, the first major bonfire outside of the Firelink Shrine. I advise resting here, especially since there's a lot to find in this area. Uh, we could actually reverse hollowing right now, since we did consume a humanity, but we're not going to. <clears throat> and we can also kindle the bonfire. <clears throat> which, um, as you guys saw... The normal bonfires give you five SS flasks, and the one at Firelink gives you ten. Um, every time you kindle a bonfire, it goes up five. And I th think it maxes out at fifteen. Or is it twenty? I think it's fifteen. Uh, that's with the right of kindling. Right now, I think you can only go up to ten. It's up to you uh, if you want to kindle all the bonfires or not. Um, you do, I believe you have to reverse hollowing in order to kindle, that's the other thing. You have to do that to kindle, and obviously do anything online, you have to reverse your hollowing as well. Uh, as of right now, I'm not going to kindle this bonfire. And I don't remember if this was a quality of life thing added for Dark Souls Remastered, but you have your covenants list here. Right now we're in the way of white. Which, by the way, is a very loose covenant, um... Tough to explain what I mean by that, but... Oh my god, I gotta get used to the lock-on system. I might play, like, not locked on. Oh no, we're... Yeah, we're, we're dead. Oh boy. So, the lock-on targeting system in Elden Ring is completely different, and that's all I've been playing lately, so I'm, like, getting really fucked up right now. We broke that poise, baby. All right. Dude, I'm having to like resist every urge in my body not to press X to jump. Which apparently if I do that, it just does a uh, gesture. Let me check my settings here real quick. Uh, toggle auto lock on. Maybe I'll turn that off. 
Maybe that's what uh, was fucking me up. So this area, in a way, actually reminds me of the beginning of Demon Souls. Um, Altaria Castle. So right now we're just going to backtrack a little bit. Um, we ran through this area because we were poisoned. So we want to give it its, uh, its just due, so to speak. Got a soul of a lost and dead over here. I don't think we have anything in here. So a lot of the things are destructible in the environment, but only very, very few actually house anything. And you'll see that as we progress. Oh, I forgot about the fireball, man. Boom. Oh shit, we both have the same idea. And I have a better idea than you do, good sir. Don't fuck with somebody that has a red-headed bob, alright? Hey, we dropped the firebomb. Alright. Um, let's clear this guy out. Now there's a couple of weird spots he can go, and one is right there. But I'm trying to think if I missed anything else. Can I make that jump? Whoa, seemed like I hit an invisible wall there. It looks like that piece of wood is blocking me. Yeah, okay. I can't remember if you make that jump or if you're intended to get there by another means. I feel like you should be able to. There we go. Is this the infamous ambush area? Uh, no. Okay. Humanity. There's actually a lot to explore in this area, and if you're, like, not very, uh, observant or mindful, you'll miss a lot of shit, honestly. Mm -mm. So if we go down there, we can get that. Where does this bring us again? This brings us to the ambush area, doesn't it? You guys see, uh, people on the side there? Ooh, it's right, you can't drink the Estus Flask on the ladder in this game. I forgot! Oh yeah. The ambush. Oh, we aight, we aight. Rubbish. So, this is an interesting item as well. Let's read that while we have a little breather. Rubbish with no value. Who in their right mind would bother carrying this around? Perhaps you need help. <laughs> so, uh, unlike the pendant, rubbish is actually not meaningless. And we will see why later. We have more ambushies. Where the fuck did they go? Stand in there? There we are. So, one thing that I will say, hollows are basically the bottom of the barrel as far as enemies go. There are a few of them though. Torch hollows are some of the strongest enemies in the game. And when hollows are buffed by um, the, uh, the channelers, they become, like, uber hollow. <laughs> we'll see an instance of that a little bit in the near future. So down there is an area that we're going to get to later. Uh, you could actually get down there immediately by doing some weird jump skip thing. But we're not doing that because we're not speedrunning, right? Okay, I think I've exhausted everything that I needed to do down here. If I remember correctly. Let's climb back up the ladder, and then we're gonna go down that one area that we bumped the barrels out. Mm -mm -mm. Hey. Alright, so we did this earlier, remember? Well, actually... Can we try to make this really shitty jump for a kind of useless item? I think we, I think we will. Uh, 
you can't make it there, right? I think you have to jump off the roof. I don't think you can make this jump as is. I think you have to go up here. Wait a minute. Uh, how do I get up there? Have I ever played this game before, you ask? Yes, I have. I think I actually go down that way that I was going to go, and then I can get there. Like I said, when you do, like, challenge runs and shit, you actually skip a lot of the game. So it's been a, it's been a minute. Alright. Oh, wait, no, that brought me back here. Hold up, hold up. And it's not that ladder. How the fuck did I get up there? Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, we've pretty much explored everything over here other than that, and I'm trying to remember how the fuck did we get there? Um... Yes, because I know we can't make that jump. Alright, let's just continue on for now. How do we get to you, good sir? How do we get down there? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. We are good. We got a wooden shield. For now, we're just gonna stick with the heater. It's a really, really good opening shield. I also normally don't play with shields, but, uh... You know what? I'm trying to have a good time. Didn't get the repost, but we got that sweet, sweet Dark Souls 1 parry. Oh boy, flubbing it up. Oh my god. Have I played before? There we go. The parry timings in all the games are actually very different. You would think they'd be somewhat the same, but Dark Souls 1 is very different from Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2 is very different from Dark Souls 3, so on and so forth. I would say that Elden Ring's parry timing reminds me more of Dark Souls 3. Um, definitely not DS1. DS1 is a very, very odd parry time, but I actually love it. When I get back in the groove with it, it's fucking awesome, but... Dark Souls 2 has the weirdest parry thing. I can't stand it, actually. As much as I love that game, I hate the parrying in that game. So, it is what it is. We're gonna get ambushed over here. And we have our first merchant, which we will touch base with in a moment, but first... I think this is gonna bring me over to my area that I was wanting to go to. Yes, indeed. Take care of these guys one at a time. There I go again, pressing the X button like I'm gonna jump. Boom. And now we can go up the ladder. And I'm pressing X once again. Excuse me, I was pressing triangle to go up the ladder. I am so messed up over here. Throwing knives, and now we can make this jump. We. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, God. Well, there you go. There is my first death, guys. That was a good one. Holy shit, was my guy fucking greased up? Goodness gracious, that sucked. It is what it is though, right? Oh, goodness. Dude's like fucking on steroids over here. And there are my beautiful souls. We do not have to fight the spear guys. I don't think they really follow you down here. We do have to fight these guys though, just to be careful. 
So let's slowly kite them out once again. Hopefully we don't die on this jump this time. <laughs> you gotta admit, my guy rolled really fucking weird there. It was like he was sliding on the edge. I had a feeling though, as soon as I landed, I was like, fuck, I'm gonna fall down, aren't I? And the shitty part is, is the item that we're getting is not that great, but since this is a slow run, I just kinda wanna get almost everything if possible, you know? Alright, got our souls back. Let's try to make it a little straighter. There we go, there we go, guys. Oh, that's right, I forgot everybody's alive downstairs. Get the light crossbow and the standard bolts. Never really uh, been much of a crossbow guy, but uh, I could definitely see the use. I was always thinking about maybe one day doing like a uh, bow only or a crossbow, you know, type of run. I think we've probably kited some people. They coming? Uh huh. Boom, boom. All right. Continuing on. Um, we're actually not in too bad shape, so I don't think I'm gonna rest at the bonfire. Oof. Well, there I was fucking around. I wanted to go talk to the merchant. Keep my head on a swivel. You seem to have your wits about you. Hmm? Then you are a welcome customer. I trade for souls. Everything's for sale. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's like a Dark Souls meme at this point. Everybody laughing, fucking weird. Things are getting treacherous <clears throat> in these parts. A horrible goat demon has moved in below, and up above. There's that humongous drake, and a bull demon, too. If you stick around this place, it might end up being your grave. <laughs> some good foreshadowing about some uh, treacherous enemies that we encounter early in the game. There is a... A bull demon. <laughs> I forgot about the go ahead and fall off a cliff. I think it's the uh, the footsteps I'm hearing are the uh, spear people above. I don't think they come downstairs. So if you kill him, uh, you can get his Ushigatana, Residence Key, Orange Guidance, Soapstone, and Humanity. But we're going to have a heart, okay? We're not going to kill him in this playthrough. Because I decided I'm not going to use the Ushigatana finally. Great weapon, by the way. Uh, if you guys plan on doing like a dex, you know, I guess, I don't know, what the fuck would you call it? Quality build, but more so dex. Ushigatana is great, has a bleed buildup, good range, good moveset, highly recommended. Oh, <laughs> so what you got here? You got some repair powder, throwing knives, fire bombs, Lloyd's Talisman, dried finger. I believe that is a yeah, online multiplayer thing, so we're not going to buy it. Maybe later, just to have it. Online play item, dried finger with multiple knuckles. It's funny, uh, kind of an allusion to um, the fingers, in a way, of Elden Ring, right? Use the strength and connection to other worlds, allowing the summoning of a third phantom, but also a second dark spirit. Also makes the summoning of a dark spirit occur earlier. Use with caution. All right, so we have some stuff here that we want to buy. The residence key was something that I believe you could open with the um, master key if you have it, but we don't. So we are going to want to pick that up. We have a repair box for repairing stuff at the bonfires. As well as a bottomless box for inventory management. We I don't really ever use that, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know if today's going to be the day. <laughs> you know, I might want to buy the buckler. We already have a heater. Buckler is uh, really good at parrying. <clears throat> Parry attacks with a large center protrusion. Small shields are always less stable, but landing critical hits after parry is easier. This shield is specialized for parrying. Um, got a bunch of arrows, and then you have the chain armor set. So let's pop some souls. Yeah, yeah, yeah shut your yap. Uh, in the original Dark Souls, you can only pop one soul at a time, which is fucking dreadful. But thankfully in Remastered, 
they fix that. One of the quality of life adjustments that they made. Very, very good one. If I do say so myself. Alright, now let's do a little bit of buying here. We're gonna buy the residence key. I will come back for a repair box, but I don't think I need that right now. Did I buy the chain armor? And what kind of swords? I'm still torn on what I'm like really gonna be using in my playthrough. I actually really like the reinforced club. I think that's the weapon that I use in my soul level one runs. But I've used it so much that I'm not really in the mood. And I might go buckler right away. <clears throat> Buy that. Was he have infinite bucklers? This fucking guy's got an endless supply over here. Um I'm gonna Meh, I might come back and buy a bow. I think this is the guy that I typically buy my bows from. Pretty sure there's not many other bow bows that are really for sale. I think you might find a few, but I think this guy is the one. Also, Rapier is really, really good in Dark Souls 2, but not so much in Dark Souls 1, in my opinion. Scimitar is alright. Um, hand Axe is actually a good soul level 1 weapon. Not a big fan of spears in any capacity. So I don't know. None of these uh, weapons are really standing out to me as something that I want to use right now. I think I'm just going to stick with my sword for the time being. Um, should we get armored up? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, it's two, that's more than 2,000. It's 2,300. <sighs> Not for now. We'll pass. We will pass. I think what I would like to do right now is actually go back to the bonfire and level up. Yeah, four levels, huh? Let's bump up that vitality, the endurance. Chase, ah, fuck, dude, I don't know what I want to do. I was thinking about strength, but now I'm like, I kind of want to do int. Maybe I'll bump up strength one. Hold on. No. I want to see what the requirements are for this Vihander, at least to maybe use that early on. 24 strength, 10 dex, so we already have the dex requirement. I can't remember, is it... When you two-hand, does it go down to half requirement? Like, so it would be like... No, that's obviously not accurate. Um, it goes down a little bit. You might need, like, 19, 18, or 20 or something if you two-hand. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you know, we're, we're still gonna have a main, main strength build, I think. We'll do 16 for now. There we go. I'm okay with that. One of the main things that I always recommend leveling up in these games, vitality or your health, whatever it might be called, and endurance. Those are like the two bare essentials. Stuff like strength, dexterity, um, even to a lesser extent intelligence and faith. Those are kind of a means to an end as far as what you want to use. Yes, items, magic, blah, 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 they scale with it to a certain point and it makes things, you know, better, right? We're going to do, like, a strength build. So, like, let's say the item we want to use requires 30 strength, but yeah, you could bump it up to 40 and get some more damage, you know what I mean? But ultimately, the things that you constantly want to get up in most of your playthroughs are vitality and endurance, because you want higher health, you want more endurance, and endurance in this game uh, plays into your equip load, which allows you to wear better armor. And in Dark Souls 1, armor is very good. If you have tanky armor... You actually feel like a tank in New Game, so keep that in mind. Um, okay, so we did our leveling. Um, let's continue on into the Berg. God. Oh my god. Well, that was terrible. 
I'm really having a heck of a time with the targeting system in this. I just forgot how janky and shit it is, dude. Again, love this game, but I think I'm going to do a lot of uh, no targeting for a while. Or like I just did. All right, all right. Now let's go into here. Let's start exploring a little bit more. Get some drops. We got hollow armor. Again, I don't want to like fat roll. Oh my god, it's heavy. What the fuck? I didn't realize how heavy that armor was. Here, we'll wear a little waist cloth. As long as we're uh, fast rolling, I'm cool with it. So this does not open from this side. We will be coming back up there from some point at some point. Excuse me. <clears throat> Head in here. Boom, boom. Basically, I'm not going to lock on when there's multiple people most of the time. Hey, buddy. It's a little bit easier in this game to lock on to single foes. And we have black fire bombs, which we already had a few still left over. Also a very good weapon for um, what is typically most people's first boss of the game coming up in a little bit. Keep that in mind. Also pretty decent uh, crowd control. Oops, do not want to do that. Again, this fucking targeting is pretty bad. <laughs> Can't lie, you know. Alright. Wow, we're getting a lot of firebombs here. It's like they're fucking going out of style. <clears throat> Climb up here. Take care of these hooligans. Boom, boom, boom. To get our soul of a lost undead. Uh, I... Yeah, you can jump over there, but... There's a few spots that you could jump to in this area that are, like, fucking pointless. I think that's one of them, and there's another one over that way. That we're definitely not gonna jump to, because I think you... If you jump to it, which is a tricky jump, you're basically stuck there. <clears throat> Let's go up this... Windy corridor and take out... This guy, because we don't feel like getting arrows in our butt cheeks. Um, so, where was I thinking? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Um, why not? It's a slow run, right? Boom. Oh, this dude with his 100% fucking block shield over here. Block that, bitch. Oh, broke that guard, though. Let's go. And we got our first Titanite Shard, which is what we use to upgrade normal weapons in this game. Very important. And let's use our purchased key that we got from the Undead Merchant. A very good item right over here that, again, you can access with the Master Key. And this makes the first boss also pretty easy. And the second boss. Well, what could be your second boss? The Gold Pine Resin. Take a look. Rare Pine Resin, which emits golden sparks, applies lightning to right-hand weapon. Affected weapon inflicts rare lightning damage, making it effective against targets which are resilient to both magic and fire. Very effective against dragon family foes. Which, if you guys remember in the opening cutscene, Gwyn used his sunlight spears, which is basically lightning, to rip the scales off of the dragons. Um, to my knowledge, the gold pine resin cannot be purchased in this game. There are a bunch of other pine resins that can be purchased from different merchants, but the gold one is the best, and I'm pretty sure there's a finite amount. Um, the boss coming up 
it is very good to use it against. And there's also another boss in this general vicinity that uh, you could wreck with that stuff. So my advice is make sure you get it and make sure you use it wisely. And hopefully, if you're playing the game for the first time, you might want to um, do the f the fights that I'm referring to a couple times before applying it, just in case you don't get it, so to speak, and you just get absolutely manhandled and then you waste it, you know what I mean? But that's up to you. <clears throat> Speaking of getting manhandled and wasted, our first super tough enemy of the game, and we're about to see if my skills to pay the bills are still there or if I'm going to suck shit. And it looks like we're still uh, quick rolling, which is great. And this is a dead end. So don't go over there, no need. So this is a tough enemy, um, one of the Knights of Gwyn. This is a Black Knight, which to my knowledge, used to be a Silver Knight, but during the war with the dragons, their armor was charred black. Um, and a couple of them obviously are out and about in the world, uh, not in the main area that they should be. And I think the lore reason behind it was either they were accompanying Gwyn, accompanying Gwyn to where he is right now, we'll learn about that later. Or they were looking for him, or they just got lost along the way after the war. It's one of those two things, or three things, I can't remember which one, but either way, let's, uh, let's get his attention with a firebomb, and then let's try to parry his ass. That didn't work. <laughs> There we go. We don't really have a good weapon right now, though, so... Keep that in mind. Uh, the Black Knights also have a decent chance of dropping their weapons, which are really good. You can backstab them as well. I find parrying to be a little bit easier. If we land one more parry, we're good. Oh, shit. I did not get the riposte. Which is a little dangerous. Let's kill you with this. And we got a titanate chunk. Um, I cannot remember if that is a randomized drop or not. But, let's go read the Titanite lore, actually. I forgot all about that. The Titanite Shard for weapon reinforcement. Most common Titanite material reinforces most standard, or excuse me, standard weapons to plus five. Titanite Shards are fragments of the legendary slabs. Titanite is etched into weapons to reinforce. Titanite Chunk for weapon reinforcement. Not found outside of Lordran. Reinforces standard weapons to plus 14. And Crystal Lightning weapons to plus four. I think they go to plus five. And then I think you can ascend them to 10 to max out? Or it might be maxed out at 5, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, I think that was a rare drop, because you go from Titanite Shard to Large Titanite Shard, Titanite Chunk, Titanite Slab? Can't remember. It's been a minute. With the discovery of Chunks in Lordran, the race to the lo- oh, geez, I can't fucking read. With the discovery of Chunks in Lordran, the race to locate the legendary slabs has begun. But- could they be your myth? So that's a good pickup for later. Probably would have been better with his sword, but you know what? It is what it is. Blue tear stone ring. This is a useless fucking ring. If anybody actually has a real use for it, let me know. Never really found it. Boost defense when HP is low. So yeah, it's... I don't know. Not great, in my opinion. But we'll equip it, because why not? Ain't got anything else right now. Also, I th don't remember if I mentioned it, but did you guys see the way that the Black Knight died? Um, that means that he's not respawning. <laughs> so, there's that. Um, let's move the Homeward Bone there, and let's move this here. And now I'm going to teach you guys a trick how to avoid a trap, basically, that's coming up. 
If you run and hug to the left and jump, you will not be hit by the exploding barrel that's coming. There you go. The easiest way to avoid it. Now, unfortunately, since we don't have the master key, we can't go down here yet, which leads you to a very, very interesting area. Also serves as a shortcut. You can get a really good ring if you are skilled and have a lot of time on your hands. Uh, there is a fellow in a barrel, but it's not here. It's up here, I guess. <clears throat> and unfortunately, we are locked off there. So I think it's in this barrel. Oh no, don't you dare. Bro, don't you fucking dare. Oh my god. There we go. <laughs> All right, we got two twinkling, yeah, twinkling titanite and two titanite chunks. That's pretty good. Those are crystal lizards. Uh, they are scattered throughout the world. They do disappear, but I'm pretty sure, like if I, if let's say I didn't kill him, and you um, quit out and go back in, he should reappear in most instances. <clears throat> the fuck? Thought I heard somebody walking. I'm like, didn't I kill everybody? So we got three more Titanite Chunks, which is actually crazy. <laughs> We're nowhere near plus 14, but we have a lot of those, so... Twinkling Titanite is, um, different. This weapon reinforcing Titanite is imbued with a particularly powerful energy. Reinforces weapons that cannot be reinforced normally to plus 5. After this Titanite was peeled from its slab, it is said that it received a special power, but its specific nature is not clear. So this, um, upgrades, uh, special weapons. So... Memory serves, if the Black Knight dropped the Black Knight sword, the Twinkling Titanite would be what it is to upgrade it. So if you're going to equate that to Elden Ring, which I'll be referring to a lot because a lot of you uh, that are probably watching this are playing Elden Ring or have played Elden Ring, it'd basically be like the somber smithing stone, right? So there's that. Um, I think the next step, guys, is yeah, we're going to go uh, take on our first major boss. It's not the Asylum Demon. Um, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of exploring, but we're actually gonna pretty much... Well, actually, wait a minute. Where do we go first? Eh, we'll deal with that when we get there, right? Okay, so I'm actually gonna top off my heels. And I'll keep my Estus Flask up just in case. We're going to go up this ladder, and first we're going to take out these archers above, because you can get shot with arrows during the boss fight, which is pretty stupid. But in a way, it's not stupid, because what FromSoft was doing was luring you up here for a reason. <clears throat> and the reason why you did a plunging attack in the um, beginning of the game against the Asylum Demon... Well, we didn't, because we killed him with the firebombs, but... They, they're teaching you. They led you up here to kill these guys, and then you should go, Oh, wait a minute. We could plunge off of here. Like that. And I'm an idiot. I hurt myself, but I wanted to show you. So we're going to fight this boss. I was going to use the gold pine resin. If you use the gold pine resin against this boss, you will rip it a new a-hole. Another way to cheesily kill it, which I think I did once. Do you see, like, that break over there? You can get the boss to actually back jump and fall off <laughs> so those are two ways to kill it gold pine resin and just get all up in the junk and smash away you get a lot of staggers with it a lot of damage you could uh bait the enemy to jump backwards it's a little tough or you could do the intended method which i will show you guys which uh revolves around i mean i guess fire bombs could be partially intended because they give you a few of them but plunging attacks so let's go and there we are, the Taurus Demon. So we're gonna climb up the ladder. And I realize the boss music's a little loud, so I apologize. I tried my best to balance the audio. 
Okay, I kind of fucked up there, but we still got a good plunge attack. If I would have connected the jump attack, it would have done a lot more damage. Might be too far away for that, yeah. Okay. Oh. And now we're gonna run back over, run up, and try to get an actual plunging attack, which might kill him. <clears throat> as long as you're not dilly-dallying, he probably shouldn't get you. Oh my god, I keep messing it up. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a tricky thing, and if you don't play the game a lot, it's very possible to mess it up the way I did. But, uh, let's throw a firebomb. And of course, I'll throw another. And there we go, we killed him with the back. The backfire. Um, and again, if the music was very loud there, I do apologize. I will listen to the video afterwards and adjust the volume accordingly. Because that shit was pounding in my headphones. <laughs> we got a humanity and a homeward bone uh, for our troubles. <clears throat> and there we go. The first boss is done, and as you can see, it is a pitfall over here, so don't go jumping off. Um, technically, I think the Taurus Demon is an optional boss. Pretty sure with the Master Key, you don't have to go this way. But this is typically the way that most people will go. I mentioned earlier that a lot of times there are not weapons, basically, in crates. Or, excuse me, items. But if you break this crate, you can grab a soul <clears throat> all right now we're in an interesting area boy isn't this like tempting right looks like a very long thing there's a bunch of items i don't know is that a bonfire over there uh, we'll see not right now but in a little bit that door is locked we need to find a key for that and here we are the most famous npc in all of dark souls Solaire of Astora. Ah, hello. You don't look hollow, far from it. I am Solaire of Astora, an adherent of the Lord of Sunlight. Now that I am undead, I have come to this great land, the birthplace of Lord Gwyn, to seek my very own son. You find that strange? Well, you should. No need to hide your reaction. I get that look all the time. <laughs> We'll continue to talk to our boy. Oh, uh, <clears throat> so I didn't scare you. I have a proposition, if you have a moment. Absolutely. The way I see it, our fates appear to be intertwined. In a land brimming with hollows, could that really be mere chance? So what do you say? Why not help one another on this lonely journey? Sure. This pleases me greatly. Well then, take this. We are amidst strange beings in a strange land. The flow of time itself is convoluted, with heroes centuries old phasing in and out. The very fabric wavers, and relations shift and obscure. There's no telling how much longer your world and mine will remain in contact. But use this to summon one another as spirits, cross the gaps between the worlds, and engage in jolly cooperation. Of course, we are not the only ones engaged in this. But I am a warrior of the sun. Spot my summon signature easily by its brilliant aura. If you miss it, you must be blind. <laughs> so, you could summon help in this game from NPCs, not just people. Um, Solaire is available for a couple fights. Uh, there's like a witch that's available for a kind of random fight. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet. I have to think about it. Um, you may or may not need to be in human form for that. I can't remember if you need to be in human form to summon an NPC summon. I know you do if uh, you know, you're trying to play online or whatever, but... I, I just don't like summons. I know it's part of the game. They put it in all of them, especially in Elden Ring. It's like really in the forefront. I just like soloing everything, but I don't know. I'll think it through. Maybe I'll do some here and there in this game. Oh, hello there. I will stay behind to gaze at the sun. The sun is a wondrous body, like a magnificent father. 
If only I could be so grossly incandescent. Solaire just killing it with a lot of his lines. Grossly incandescent. Jolly cooperation. Uh, he's been memed into oblivion in a good way. Very respected individual. You will find him throughout the game. He has a quest line that's pretty tragic. Um, that's the first appearance of him. And we got the white soapstone, which he mentioned about the jolly cooperation. But we could read the thingamajig. I think it's under keys. No. Oh, there it is. Doop. Online play item, leave summon sign. Be summoned to another world as a phantom through your sign and defeat the area boss to acquire humanity. Hollows cannot conduct summons, so there you go. In Lordran, the flow of time is distorted and the white so uh, sign soapstone allows the undead to assist one another. So it's basically like uh, when Dark Souls Remastered dropped, I entered the Sunbro Covenant at the Sunlight Altar. And I threw my summon sign down in front of the main area boss in this general area to help people. Uh, you get humanity, and since I was in that covenant, I would get covenant rewards for doing so. But we're not playing online, so that's a rather useless item. Not going to worry about it right now. So, we're going to have to make a run for it across this bridge. I am not going to say anything, but you will likely see what happens. And I think we should be okay... I'm probably going to leave the armor on. Actually, the blue tear stone ring might help if I fuck up now that I'm thinking about it. But we're trying to make a beeline over here to these stairs. If we can. Oh, we just made it. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's get a little, a little look for you guys. Yes, the Hellkite Drake is there. And we have quite a bit to explore still, which I'm not really going to do. I don't think... Is there any items over here that I can grab real quick, or is it just people? Just people. We have a lot of souls that we could use to level up or buy stuff. Um, but the main thing, and a lot of people will miss this if you get to this point, yes, you can, it's very tricky, and you probably won't get it right away as a beginner, but you can get in there, and there is a bonfire, and we actually do want to get there, but for now, we're going to do this, if you go down this stair, wait, what's this, this kind of looks familiar, there's a bonfire down there, huh? This is the first main instance of a shortcut in the interconnected level design. I remember when I first found this, I was like, what the fuck? This is the bonfire uh, before the Taurus Demon that we found in the Undead Burg. So now I gotta think, which way do I want to go? I don't remember if there's any items. So the way that I was going with the two warriors that were down there, I killed the one skeleton. Leads to a bunch of rats that can poison you. And I don't typically like going that way. Did we... I think we last rested at this bonfire anyway. We have kicked the shortcut, so we could risk it. Let's try to get past the Hellkite Drake. I don't remember how to do it. Do you just, like, wait or something? He'll, like... Fly down eventually. If you just try running for it, he'll just blow you away with fire, but... I think if you stand in a certain spot, he'll just come down. And then you could try running by him. Oh my god, I flubbed it up. Oh no, I think we're done. Get up, bro. Yeah, we're dead. Oh my god, did we make it? Oh, we made it. Woo! Sit. Yay, we got it. <clears throat> so he flies away momentarily, but I'm pretty sure if you go back across the bridge, he will respawn. There's actually a good weapon on this bridge. Um, pretty cool statue there. I don't remember who that's supposed to depict. I can't remember if that's like supposed to be Gwyn's wife, or if that is... Gwyn's mom? I really don't remember. I could be completely off about all of it, of course. 
So here we go. This is actually a uh, covenant spot that we cannot access because we don't have high enough faith. But if we did, we could join the uh, Sunbro Covenant Sunlight Altar. Now this statue, very uh, peculiar. Um, it resembles... I, I don't want to go too off the deep end here because I don't know if it's for reals or not. It's kind of broken. You can see the head there. Head sort of looks normal. It's definitely... I think it's supposed to resemble Gwyn, right? Or is it his son? And that's why it's broken. I think it's supposed to resemble Gwyn's son, which we will kind of touch on a little bit later. Uh, and it's broken not for natural cause reasons. Um, you actually basically I'm pretty sure it's been confirmed more or less you find Gwyn's son in a later Dark Souls game it's very interesting stuff but we'll we'll touch on it a little bit later but it was broken because essentially um, he kind of betrayed his own kind in a way whether or not you believe it's for the good or for the worst that's the whole thing in this game guys it's up to you to decide is the Age of Fire the way to go, or should it be the Age of Darkness? But, uh, we've opened this, and what I would like to do now is actually grab some of these items if I can. If we die, we're still basically here since we did rest. Let's just double check. Because, like I said, I believe the Drake comes back. Also, I want to point out, don't think I mentioned this, but it was in my head. That if you go below where we were earlier with the two skeleton warriors leading to the area with the rats that I told you about. If you have a bow, you could shoot the drake's tail uh, from down below and it will drop a drake sword, which is a very, very, very good early game weapon. But be warned, the weapon starts to suck about midway through the game. So if you want to kill stuff in like one shot early on, go for it. Don't get too addicted to it. It does suck eventually. <clears throat> Another way to do it is obviously get the drake on the bridge like I did and then go cut its tail off, but <clears throat> a little treacherous at low levels, wouldn't you say? Yo, I thought I was going to get a backstab. What the fuck? Oh my god. Combat though, you know what I'm saying? Yo, where's that guy going? He just fucking ran away. Oh. Trying to get the, uh... There we go. There we go. Alright, let's evade this and pick these items up. Soul of a Nameless Soldier and... The Claymore, which is a pretty good sword and a decent strength uh, quality sword. So, something we might consider using again. Still not quite sure what we're going to do. But for now, we rest at the bonfire. Let's level up again. What do we got? Five... We'll do two in Vitality, one in Endurance, one in Strength. And now I gotta start making my decision, guys. <sighs> Am I gonna try any Faith or uh, Int stuff? I still think I wanna dump into Int. So early game, this is kind of a waste, because we're not really, like, <laughs> gonna get anything. We could always go back to Rickert, but here's the thing. Um... Dark Souls 1 doesn't have fast travel until a way later point. So I would manually have to go all the way back to the Firelink Shrine at this point. Which, in reality, I know it's not that far away and I know a way to get there. But with the course of this playthrough, it's going to take a little bit. Um, so i got to think about this. Do I just keep the souls on my person? Or do I don't? You know, I'm going to go with Int. We're going to do Strength Int. So we're not going to be maxed out at Int at any point, but... You know, we'll, we'll have a few things up our sleeves eventually, right? 
Okay. So, since we reached here and we kicked the uh, shortcut, really the only area that I didn't go to was the one with the rats, which isn't that great, because it leads up eventually to where we're going. And we're going to continue on there to the Undead Parish, where we will find a lot of new enemies, a lot of new items, a lot of new twists and turns, a really good shortcut, and then eventually a boss, which I gotta think if we're gonna take it on next, or if it's gonna be in the distant future. So we'll uh, we'll rest one more time, and we'll pick up soon with the Undead Parish.